<laughs> jazz, 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 jazz. Cool. There is so much less that I know about this genre, even compared to rock, and I don't even know a lot about rock. I apologize in advance because this is going to be very music theory heavy based. Seventh chords. Classical rock and jazz both use seven chords. It's just that jazz is so predominantly uses seven chords all the time. And it gives it this very, in my opinion, it's this very magical quality that allows for so many different kinds of note choices as far as improvisation. That's the thing about jazz that I really like. The improvisational aspect. If you're a heavy-duty classical musician, um, you don't come across a lot of improvisation if that's all you do. In rock, you do come across a lot of improvisation as far as jamming with other guitarists, etc., etc., but when it comes to jazz, there's a more, I don't want to say sophisticated aspect to it, but definitely you can't just go, okay, we're going to go all play in the key of A and you know what to play. If you're going to jam as a jazz musician, there's changes, chord changes that are crazy that um, if you don't know ahead of time what they sound like and how a lot of the music theory works, what you're going to play as far as improvisation is just not going to fit. And so knowing how functions and seventh chords work is uh, a huge thing when it comes to learning how to play jazz, as at least from the perspective of a classical musician, <laughs> even a rock musician trying to look into this new genre for me. Drastic key changes is another thing that's not new in classical and rock music, but when you're trying to improvise and you're trying to make up your own kind of ideas on the spot and you don't know how to navigate the key changes, it can sound bad. It has the potential to sound really bad, or sound really cool, but uh, if you really don't know what you're doing, it just sounds bad. And so, looking into jazz as a classical musician has really forced me to learn how key changes work in different songs, etc., etc. The next level for me would be to uh, kind of go beyond the music theory aspect and not look at it as like a music exercise sometimes and just learn how to play in the style and what i mean by that is trying to copy my favorite jazz musicians a few of them would be oscar peterson john coltrane grant green wes montgomery joe pass charlie parker these are just a few i actually don't know a lot of the modern ones. I know there are a lot of really cool jazz uh, groups out there that do really cool stuff and are trying to break away from kind of like I guess what I'd call old school jazz styles. But anyway, I'm trying to get to the next level by just trying to copy what my favorite jazz musicians sound like instead of learning how the chords go together and looking at it as like a textbook kind of exercise. There's this melodic approach that I'm trying to incorporate into my jazz playing and it doesn't really come out right now in the way I play violin. <laughs> it just sounds like I know all the scales and I know all of the theory and I know more or less what fits but I'm not really playing a melodic line that sounds like I'm singing on the violin. And so I'm trying to force myself to not shred, pretty much, when I play jazz. I'm trying to lay cool, sound cool, be more chilled out, and honestly sometimes that's hard. Coming from a guy who just is so used to on his fingers. <laughs> and uh, I'm also trying the more mellow approach, so just chill out, I'm trying to listen to the background while trying to make up something cool with my violin or guitar or what have you. And it's hard because I'm still learning. Honestly, I'm very young as far as jazz playing is concerned. I just don't know much about the genre. I'm not even going to try and talk about the history. I'm not going to embarrass myself by doing that <laughs> because I know nothing. <laughs> If 
there's anything that helps me look into jazz uh, more clearly as a musician, it's the fact that I'm really quite interested in the sound of blues. And honestly, blues was my stepping stone into a lot of, especially old school rock and jazz. The genius of the blues is that they make um, the dominant chord a tonic chord. I don't want to talk about this too much. It's getting too music theory heavy, and it might not be useful to you. But the blues definitely has a sound that is so akin to both jazz and rock in different ways. The blues has that sound as far as improvisation and melodic lines that jazz borrows so much from. And so I'm glad that I like that blues sound. It helps me look into jazz as a musician, and it helps me adapt the style a little more. There's so much that I'm learning about the genre. There's so much that I don't know. There's so much music to listen to. And I haven't been good about listening to more jazz on a daily basis, if I'm being honest with myself. It's a genre that fascinates me, absolutely. And I'm trying to play it, I'm trying to play it better. Whenever I play jazz, I sound like either a classical violinist trying to play jazz, or a rock musician slash blues musician trying to play jazz. And I'm trying to not sound like that anymore. I'm trying to sound like Joe Valdez is playing legit jazz, not a classical or a rock person trying to play jazz. So that's where I'm at with the jazz stuff. Keep watching. <laughs> it's hard. Whatever. I'm over it. <laughs> chords. In rock and pop music, for example, you get this kind of chord very often. Let's play a G major chord. Um. You know, plain sounding, every day, everyone's heard that chord. Now, all you need to do is add really one note and you turn it into a jazz chord. It's the same kind of chord. Sounds very different. You can even play it here. Very different. That's kind of what gives jazz its quality. I don't want to get too music theory-ish about it, but it's that sound given by seventh chords is what we call it in music theory. It allows for a lot of tonal ambiguity. What do I mean by that? The thing that I like about jazz is that it stretches my ears. Ow. Not literally, but it teaches me how to hear things in a different way in a way that classical and rock can't. Including that extra note in the chord, and including that in every chord of the song, it allows for a lot of possibilities as far as improvisation, which is a huge thing in jazz, and it's not such a big thing in classical at all, almost. And it's not as big in rock, but improvisation is what defines so much of jazz, at least the jazz I like to listen to. And when you have that much possibility, there are so many notes you can play, and that's what allows jazz to sound really cool, honestly. When there are a lot of quote-unquote wrong notes that don't so sound so wrong anymore. But anyway, those are my two cents on jazz. Let me know in the comments section if this video was of any use to you at all. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, and share. And hit that bell at the bottom so you get notified when I upload anything. I am still working on my jazz stuff. And I don't know if you're a professional or an amateur like me, but welcome. My name is Joe Valdez. Keep playing jazz. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs>